Hey everyone, so here are my pros and cons, my likes and dislikes of the Samsung Watch 5. Uh, the one I have here is the smallest one you can buy. Uh, so some things in particular will be uh, in particular on this small size. Again, these are my own personal likes and dislikes. You can disagree with me one, just be nice about it in the comments. My first like, and that goes for pretty much any of these watches, is how easy it is to remove the band. You just move this little tab here, pop it out, uh, and pop in another watch band really, really easy. This takes 20 millimeter standard watch band sizes, uh, which means you can buy them like I did this one off of Amazon for super duper cheap. Uh, and I've had no issues with them falling off or anything like that, uh, which I had issues with on my Garmin Venue 2 Plus. Uh, the third party bands like this where it pops off uh, at times. On this watch, it does not, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, and again, you can buy these bands, again, like this one's a really nice band, super cheap on Amazon, uh, way cheaper than, say, from Samsung or from Garmin or whatever. Uh, so easy to remove and replace the bands uh, and change up the style a bit. Uh, then my second thing here will be a like and a dislike, and that is in particular to this size of watch. Again, this is the smallest one we have here. Uh, the size is nice, and it's also kind of not nice. It's nice because it is so small and it's so light, you forget it's on your wrist. I mean, it's almost non-existent on your wrist. Because it's so small, it's also incredibly light. Uh, again, so if you're out running or doing exercise with it, again, you kind of forget it's even there. It does not get in the way. And again, because it's so small and lightweight, uh, I have not had the issue of smacking it against anything. Uh, usually I like big watches, like my Phoenix 6X here from Garmin. I have smacked this thing against so many different things, it's not even funny. Uh, I have not hit it against anything, uh, which is a point I'm going to come to back in a bit here. Uh, but yeah, because it's so small uh, and thin. But because it's so small and thin, you can see it, it went away on me. Uh, but if you get a picture message from someone through text or whatever, it will pop up in your notifications. You can see that picture message. But because, again, how small this one is in particular, if there's any words or anything on it, it is hard to read those words in that picture message, and you cannot seem to zoom or pinch the zoom or anything like that. Uh, so it's cool, you can see the picture message, but you might not be able to read what is actually on that picture message, Message, if that makes some sense. Uh, so yeah, the size is both good and bad. Uh, next, of course, is a like, is this display. It is beautiful display. I have the brightness up almost all the way here. Very beautiful display, of course, as you expect from this type of watch. I mean, these colors are just nice and beautiful. They just pop. Uh, again, coming from something like Garmin Phoenix 6X, where it uses, uh, I think it's called MIP display, something like that, where yes, it has colors, but it has a very small amount of colors to it. This thing has like thousands of colors or whatever. Uh, the display is just super duper nice. Compared to something like that, it's a nice, beautiful display, even on this smaller size watch. A dislike, again, this might not bother bother some people. Uh, I always like always on displays, though. Again, coming from the Garmin Phoenix, that's always on display. The battery life on this is not great, just like uh, on the Apple Watches. Uh, the battery life is not great, especially if you have always on display. I can get through a day with it. Uh, the other day I worked for nine hours, and very uh, physical job, I'm always moving, pushing, shoving things, whatever. For nine hours, uh, when I came back home, at the end of the night, it was at like 30 something percent. Uh, so again, it will get you through an entire day, even with always on display on and moving a lot. But again, coming from something like Garmin Phoenix, that will last me two weeks, uh, even with activities and everything else. Because in that day, I didn't actually you know, do a run or do any sort of workout, it's just my work, my, my job. Uh, it, it dies. So with always on display, the battery life is not the greatest. Again, it will get me through an entire day, which is decent. It's just I would like more battery life. I know a lot of people complain about this. And of course, yes, you can turn always on display off. You will get a little bit more battery life. But personally, if, if I'm using a watch, I want the, the display on all the time. So I don't have to you know flick my wrist or whatever. Uh, I'm going to see the time all the time. So that is a point of a watch. Uh, I don't like the one it turns off. It is on always on right now, it's just not my wrist, so it's not going to stay on. But yeah, so battery life is not the greatest. 
uh, basically I would have to charge this thing two times a day. I would say once when I wake up, uh, you know, if I were to bed, uh, once when I wake up in the morning so I can actually get through the day, then once at night uh, before I go to bed so I can get my sleep data on it because again, I like all that data. Uh, so battery life is so-so. I mean, it'll get you through a day, but you'll have to charge it probably multiple times a day. Again, that can depend on your usage, uh, of course. Uh, another like I have, I'm gonna keep comparing this to the Garmin Phoenix because that's my main watch is the Phoenix. I uh, went for a 5K run yesterday. Uh, the GPS was actually really, really good. I know in the past, it has been a problem with these Samsung watches is the GPS is not always the best. In my experience here, using again both these watches yesterday, they were both right on with each other. Again, I, I think the Phoenix series here has, has a really good GPS system in it, uh, very accurate. This was right on with it. I mean, this would go off saying you know, I hit a mile. This would go off like a second or two later saying I hit the mile. Two miles, you know, two miles, three miles, three miles. It was right on with the GPS. So GPS accuracy, at least again, in my experience here, has been awesome. Uh, it was right on with my very expensive Phoenix uh, 6X, um, which is a very good accurate watch. Uh, so again, accuracy with the GPS at least is very, very good. Uh, dislike though I have, and this is a kind of a bigger one to me, is I only wore it for one day to work and as far as I know, I did not smack it on anything. Again, I do that all the time with my Phoenix. I'm always smacking it against stuff. Uh, I mean, the bezel on it is kind of beat up uh, a little bit, but this, I don't think I smacked against anything. Uh, it was the first day I wore it. After my shift, I noticed, I don't know if you guys will see this in the video, but, and it's actually gotten worse after a few days, uh, actually not even really wearing it too often, not to work. Uh, but there are some chips on the bezel, on the outside bezel here. Again, it's kind of hard to see with my lighting and how small they are. They are pretty small, but you guys hopefully see right above my thumb there. I should go a bit over here too. Uh, I have some chips on it. Again, I, as far as I know, did not smack it against anything. Uh, at least not hard. And it, it's a little bit chipped. So it's not the most durable with the bezel. Uh, the glass, I believe, is sapphire on all of them, which is really cool. So glass shouldn't be chipping or scratching too easy. But the bezel itself, it, it's already... And again, this is after the first day of use, I already have some had some scratching on it one more thing i do like again going back into the run yesterday here uh is when you're done here uh it tells you of course your time your distance uh your pace your how many calories you burned again these are all pretty much on par with my garmin uh gives you it gives you a lot of data here uh so it gives you a pace again gives you a heart rate with a little bit of a chart uh it tells you your heart rate zones which is really cool and how long you're in each of them uh, gives you a bit of your laps. It tells you your, your VO2 max. Again, this is a little bit off from my Garmin. My Garmin, it says 55, but I've been wearing my Garmin for the last like two or three years uh, since it came out. Uh, so, and this is probably a bit more accurate because my, I don't know how my VO2 is actually even that good. Uh, but then it tells you a whole bunch of different uh, metrics here as well. I mean, you have, look at that. I mean, look at all these different metrics. Contact time, your flight time. Uh, vertical, your stiffness, and it tells you if you're good or, well, if you need to improve. I uh, don't know what exactly all these mean, but it's still really cool to see uh, from the watch itself. Again, there's no, I didn't have a heart rate sensor or anything else on this. It's all from just, you know, or, uh, external heart rate sensor or anything, uh, or any other fancy stuff. It's all from the watch itself. Like, that is just really cool. Uh, it gives you a sweat loss, which something, again, the Garmin does as well. Uh, it's telling you here... Uh, to drink 627 milliliters of water to replace 150%. And we click on this. Okay, this watch is a little bit small. I would recommend getting the bigger watch. Okay. Um, anyway, anyways, I would recommend getting the bigger watch if you wanted to be able to see more stuff uh, easier. Uh, so this one is really small. It's nice and light, but it is really small. Um, and then it also gives you a bit of a map here as well, which is just really cool. Of course, you can see this on your phone. Uh, which, I mean, a lot of things do after the fact. Uh, but it's just really cool. It's a lot of details on here. Uh, which is really, really cool. I mean, it's it's so many details. So many details. And then, of course, kind of like the Apple Watch. It gives you, instead of rings, it gives you this heart. 
uh, which I've not been wearing this at all today. Uh, but it tells you your steps, your active time and activity uh, colors. And then as you do that, as you have uh, my home here, uh, my home face, uh, this will fill in. And of course, if I click this, it goes back to that. It's just really cool. Like, I really like that. Uh, then I'm sure there's more things I just can't think of uh, for making this video. But I just want to end this on one more really cool thing here. And this goes for, uh, I know you can do the same thing with like the Apple Watch or these other uh, more smartwatch oriented things. But again, coming from the Garmin, even from the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, you don't get as much smartwatch stuff on Garmin stuff. Uh, There's more, of course, uh, fitness oriented. But again, you can get notifications on here. You can see text. And not only can you see the text, you can reply to the text. Uh, you can use a keyboard on here with the swiping, uh, swiping keyboard, which is really cool. You can send, uh, you can send emojis. You can send a whole bunch of different stuff. You of course can accept phone calls on here, which I did the other day when my phone was nowhere near me. Uh, I was upstairs in my room. My phone was downstairs. Uh, it doesn't sound exactly the best. I mean, it's not the loudest, but if you're not in a loud area, you can definitely talk through this. Uh, when you get a phone call and you don't have your phone near you. No, it doesn't sound horrible. It just doesn't sound great. It's just really cool how you can do that. And again, the person on the other side and the other line said it didn't sound the best, but it wasn't, you know, they could definitely hear me and understand what I was saying and stuff. Not as good as through the actual phone, of course. But it's just really cool how you can do that. Again, with the notifications, you can send text messages and whatnot. Uh, this thing makes a whole bunch of different noises. Uh, so when you get a phone call, it makes noise. Get messages it can be making noises of course you can turn all that down as well there's just a lot of really cool functions on these smart watches i know samsung has been doing that for a long time uh that you just do not get with even garmin's fancier smart watch uh the venue 2 plus now on that you can reply do quick replies if you're using uh android and you can actually answer phone calls on that now and you do get a bunch of noises but you still cannot do actual texting on it like you cannot send legitimate text on it you just get quick replies which are cool but this is just even cooler uh so something that's really cool again it's a smart watch more of a smart watch oriented smart watch than it is fitness oriented uh but even with the fitness it was it was right on with my garmin all right thank you guys very much for watching especially if you made it to this far into the video let me know what your thoughts are i think it's a really cool watch but personally i would say uh, I think it's a little bit more money too, but buy the bit bigger one uh, just because this thing, I mean, unless you want the super small watch, uh, it's just hard to see stuff on here at times. Um, so I would say spend a little bit extra money, get the bigger one, or even get the Pro, uh, the 5 Pro when it goes, I mean, I think it's like 500 bucks, so it's like double the price of this, but it goes on sale all the time. Uh, but yeah, this is an awesome watch, especially if you want something super small for this size. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate you. Hope you have a good one. Goodbye.